Wait a little bit afternoon. I gave your daughter to gratefully adopt the protocol, ably established by the Solicitor General. I remain grateful for the opportunity this occasion gives me to highlight to this honorable court and those listening the affairs and the workings of the Department of Public Prosecutions during the past year and our expectations for the upcoming year. For me, my submissions today are a little different. This is my first such speech, having been appointed during the height of the pandemic. If I may, I would like to briefly lay out my vision for our department. My strategic focus is four-pronged. First, deliver high-quality prosecution services, taking advantage of information technology to achieve effective and efficient outcomes. The second prong is to be responsive to victims and witnesses in the prosecution process. The third, to influence and implement policy, procedure, and law reform. And finally, to deliver legal services within a framework that supports strong governance, professional capability, and staff well-being. My Lord, my department is a cohesive, motivated, professional, and results-oriented team. Every staff member from the lowest to the highest has taken ownership of and is committed to the vision and the mission of the department. All staff have been provided with opportunities for holistic professional and personal development, which has also included their mental well-being. I mentioned a major development, my Lord, in the department last year, continuing on the work of my immediate predecessor. In order to discharge our prosecutorial mandate more efficiently and effectively, the department was restructured and will be effective at the beginning of the next financial year. The restructuring has now created three deputy director posts, three senior crown counsel, and there are four crown counsel and four crown counsel junior grade. The benefit of the new structure is that it not only increases the number of very senior prosecutors, but it also creates the availability of succession planning to those junior counsel who wish to ascend the ranks. And to that, I thank Mr. Justice Wesley. In relation to our work, my Lord, it comes as no surprise that the focus of our trial work for the last year was to make a dent in the backlog of cases, not all of which can be attributed to the pandemic. With the appointment of Madam Justice Sudor Williams as the supervising judge of the criminal division and her strict, sometimes very strict, <laughs> case management hearings, as of this morning, not counting the retrial from the Privy Council, there are only three 2018 indictments, two 2019 indictments, and six 2020 indictments to be tried. That is a major accomplishment. And to add to that, there are only 2021 indictments and 17 2022 indictments. We have made huge leaps and bounds forward with the list. Currently, my Lord, there are no indictments pending where a child witness needs to testify. Madam Justice Sugar Williams should be congratulated for her work in this regard, even if sometimes it caused the two of us to clash. <laughs> yes. As to Justice Wolf, my colleagues and the defense bar, we are a dying breed, but we are still getting the job done. Whilst there were definitely some highlights last year, my lord, there were some disappointments. And one of those highlights was, in fact, the first use of the new special measures to pre record a child's evidence. However, it would be remiss of me not to mention the challenges that we have all faced. It is no secret that the criminal division of these courts is the gender-headed stepchild. The criminal justice system as a whole is under attack, and our infrastructure is aging and not aging well. It is all of us, the bench and the bar alike, who suffer as a result. Our people are being killed, and witnesses are too afraid to testify, for fear of being labeled as a snitch and having their picture go viral on social media posts. We have legislation to allow us remote testimony and the ability to play audiovisual police interviews. But the projector in court four is not working and is temperamental at best, as is the Wi-Fi connection. Here in court one, the two screens have this very eerie green glow, but we make do. There is a TV that literally I and a clerk or I and an usher have to physically raise and put on a table for the jury to see. And I do mean me. There is a time to stand on ceremony. It has to be done and someone has to do it. My Lord, our children are being molested and we have legislation to allow special measures, but we don't have a purpose-built room to pre-record their evidence. And again, we make do. 
We use Justice Subir's criminal chambers. Subir layers, my apologies. My department provides the iPads. We also make uh, the Zoom meetings. We sort out the recordings. In the magistrate's court, we set up the live links. But again, those courtrooms are not equipped to temple that type of evidence. My Lord, our serious offenders with mental health challenges, Mr. Wolf can talk about that most recently, there is nowhere for them to be kept to receive the treatment that they require. And again, it's the criminal justice system who has to make food. I cannot speak for the bench, my Lord, but I know that we at the criminal bar are tired of just making do. And to be clear, I'm not criticizing the registry. I make these pleas to those in Parliament. I'm sorry, Mr. Lister, it was a bad thing for <laughs> <laughs> But I make these pleas to those persons in Parliament to pass these laws and then don't provide the funding for us to use them effectively. These same people will soon be debating how we spent our money last year and how we will spend our money in the upcoming year. But it is those same people passing sly comments from the safety of the House about innocent people being put in prison and complaining about where our judges park their cars. Well, forgive me, my Lord, for briefly changing the tone of these proceedings. <laughs> but those who seek to criticize the system should know what restricts the system. And in closing, my Lord, the Department of Public Prosecutions is excited for what the future brings. Having heard the Solicitor General, we look forward to continuing to make a positive contribution to the community through our role in the system. Unless I can give any further assistance. Yes. Those are my yes, thank you, Ms. Clark. Um, and 